term hunting is conservation might sound strange to those that don't hunt or to those unfamiliar with a North American model of wildlife conservation. But it's true, hunting is conservation. Between the Pittman-Robertson tax on rifles, ammunition and hunting equipment, and the revenue made from state hunting and fishing licenses, federal duck stamps, wildlife organizations, and so on, millions upon millions of dollars are spent each year restoring habitat and increasing wildlife herds nationwide. Of the many success stories in conservation from bison to turkeys, hunters have been at the forefront of restoration efforts in the past century to ensure these incredible animals continue to thrive for future generations. Wild sheep have long been a restoration effort near and dear to the hearts of many outdoorsmen and women. Successful reintroductions throughout North America have re-established herds into their native ranges. Contact with domestic sheep and goats remains one of the biggest challenges in wild sheep restoration efforts, as domestic sheep and goats harbor dangerous pathogens that can cause large die-offs among wild sheep populations. The Best of the West is a proud sponsor of the Wild Sheep Foundation and joins with them in their purpose to put and keep wild sheep on the mountain. On this episode of The Best of the West, we're headed to La Palmosa Ranch, located in northern Mexico, where the Espino family has made large strides in reintroducing desert bighorns to their native habitat of the Chihuahuan Desert. Here at La Palmosa, we hunt desert sheep, mule deer, whitetail, and elk. We're known mostly for hunting rams. Uh, we've been doing this for the past seven, eight years. And I think we successfully established a population that had become extinct in the 60s and 70s due to contact with domestic goats. There are several other spots in, in Coahuila State where efforts of reintroducing these species have been made and successfully now they roam throughout different parts of, of Coahuila State. We have partnered up with Wild Sheep Foundation and they've helped us restore habitat and help these wild populations thrive once again in different parts of the country. Going into this hunt, I'd actually never seen a desert sheep before and it was pretty surreal that first day when we got out there and we're cruising along the roads just heading out to the spot where we're going to start climbing up. and. Our guide uh, in the back, Juan, stops stops Emilio and says, hey, there, there are sheep up there. And I grab my binos real quick and I throw them up. And sure enough, there's a big ram just standing there looking at us. And I was I was kind of taken, taken back at the sight of that thing. And I just couldn't believe how majestic they are. And, you know, they turn their head and you see that full curl come around. And it's, it's a pretty amazing experience. On the first morning, decided that we needed to go make sure our gun was on from the travel. So we went down to Emilio's range, just rifled a couple of shots into those gongs, made sure everything was good. And right after that, we were, we were onto the hunt. When we finally parked the Jeep on day one, I, I stepped out and looked up the mountain. And th these Mexican mountains are no joke. They, they are big time. And when we first started going up, I'm, I'm looking up at that thing and I'm thinking, how far are we gonna go on, on this first day? And you know, we get up to a vantage point, we pull our, our pads out and we pull the binos out and start, start glassing the hillside. And there's a lot of country to look at and these sheep look just like the country that they're living in. So it's, it's not necessarily easy glassing by any means, but sure enough, we, we kept going up towards the summit and for every shelf we would, we would get over, we would pause, sit down, glass an area, move around, keep looking, and if we didn't get any, any sign of sheep, we would load the packs up and keep going. And so that was pretty much the game plan of day one. That's, that was what we, we stuck to. And the Jeep, every time we would stop, I'd look back and try to find the Jeep, and it just kept getting smaller and smaller until the point where I, I couldn't find the Jeep. And once we got up to a certain point, I actually looked back and I could, I could see the beautiful compound here, which was kind of a cool experience too. I was thinking, man, we're, we're pretty high up here now and it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a bit of a hike back. So I was trying to, trying to keep my, my mental toughness up for that, that aspect. 
Juan is, is an exceptional sheep hunter. It was pretty cool seeing someone who's clearly been doing it for a long time. Every, anytime we'd get up to a skyline, he would stay super low, move really slow, and he would meticulously look over every inch of the mountain, it seemed. He was constantly moving around, trying to get eyes on, on every little bit of ground where there could possibly be a sheep. Unraveling the story to any hunt can be painstaking. Staying focused and positive while running through a host of possibilities and different outcomes comes with the territory, especially when it's a desert bighorn sheep tag in your pocket. Nine years ago, Best of the West followed Hawaiian native James Clask on his very first sheep hunt after having the incredible fortune of drawing a Nevada desert bighorn sheep tag with only a few points. Early in the hunt, James had a great ram broadside at 200 yards, but with ewes mixed in and no clear shot, James watched him slip away. Then, two days later in the pouring rain after an all-day stalk, James finally got hands on his first ram. Here, I gotta do it too. <laughs> Best of the West pro staff member Jared Peterson also made it out of the less than one club on his first desert bighorn sheep hunt. After over an hour of waiting behind the rifle in the hot desert sun, the old oh, yeah, desert yeah. warrior finally stepped out and Jared yeah. took it from there. Speaking about waiting on a ram, Pat Romero knows a thing or two about that. In 2018, Pat finally drew his Arizona Bighorn sheep tag after 27 years of applying. Having waited almost three decades for the opportunity, Pat knew exactly what he was looking for. With plenty of opportunities to fill his tag in the opening days of his hunt, Pat patiently waited until his son could join him on day three of the hunt. That's when things got serious. From 475 yards away, Pat's Down desert up. bighorn sheep hunt turned out exactly as he'd hoped. He got to walk up on a lifelong dream with his son by his side. Legendary sheep hunter and author Jack O'Connor said it best. There is no halfway. After his first exposure, a man is either a sheep hunter or he isn't. He either falls under the spell of sheep hunting and sheep country, or he won't be caught dead on another sheep mountain. We're located in the Chihuahuan Desert. We can conduct hunts uh, either on the smaller mesas or on the bigger mountain, depending where we spot rams. Contrary to what most people believe, we don't always find rams up in the mountain. Sometimes we find them in the mesas. I think they like it three-fourths of the way where they can escape if they get a predator. They tend to try to escape going up usually most of our hunters are able to get a, a good ram within two to four days we pride ourselves of shooting on the mature rams we let them get to an adequate age where they completed their social participation in the chip herd and that way we can sustain a healthy population while at the same time satisfying our hunters desire to get big rams. So day one we we made a day out of out of hiking and looking and we probably gained about 1500 feet of elevation and hiked about four miles which you know mountain miles are a little bit different than Missouri miles what I'm used to so we ended up you know getting up top and by the time it, it we decided that there it probably wasn't gonna work out where we were at. We decided to head back down. We worked the worked a ridge all the way back down to the Jeep and we, we decided we were probably gonna call it a day. The winds kicked up to about 25 miles per hour. It, it just wasn't really looking like things were gonna work out that day. But sure enough, Juan kept his binos up and he said, hey, stop. I, I see some sheep up there and I my heart starts pounding again and we were throwing the spotting scope up and sure enough, there's a group of three beautiful rams and it's right about sunset, so we're thinking, all right, we need to, we probably need to come right back here in the morning and see if we can get eyes on these things again. A 
Uh, for the past seven years, I've had the good fortune of being associated with Best of the West. I've been privileged to have uh, them along on several of my hunts. Had a wonderful Rocky Mountain Bighorn sheep hunt a few years back that was filmed for a past TV show in Wyoming and had a great hunt. After that, we did a, a mountain goat hunt. The rifles that I've been able to use and that I've purchased from Best of the West have certainly given me success that I don't think that I would have had uh, that I would have had otherwise. When looking for somewhere to book a desert sheep hunt, I didn't just want to book a hunt anywhere. A little bit of research, especially with, through a lot of the people associated with the Wild Sheep Foundation, led me to the La Palmosa here in Mexico and uh, learning a lot more about their history and conservation and everything that they've done for the desert sheep and the conservation of the species. Being able to have my 21-year-old son go on this hunt was something I was really, really looking forward to. So the next morning, we decided, hey, let's, let's pack up and go after those rams, see if we can get eyes on them. And I was happy that Dad tagged along on this day. It was, it was pretty fun that, that he got to climb up the mountain, too, and, and be there with us. And that, that was pretty awesome. But we went right back to where we spotted the rams the night before and won within minutes. He had them in, in the glass right away. He got his spotting scope set up on them. We took a look at them and said, yeah, I think we need to, we need to go get a, get a look at these things a little bit closer. So they, they were in a little bit of a, a tough spot to get to. We were gonna have to go around the backside of the mountain and try to get above them and you know, look down at them. That's exactly what we did. We drove around the backside of the mountain and we started climbing and it, it, was, it was still a little bit of a climb and it was, straight up so we we took our time and I'm not gonna lie my heart was pounding and I was I was breathing heavy but in the back of my mind I, I knew what was laying over the other side and I, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna stop till we got up there when we got close to the skyline Juan signaled back to me he said hey slow down I'm gonna go take a look over the top and you know he stealthily crawled over and just barely peeked over and when he turned back, he kind of smiled at me and gave me a thumbs up that they were there. So that's really when my heart started to pound. <laughs> I was pretty worked up at the time. And uh, we, we started game planning. We were, you know, getting the binos on them, trying to get ranges. The first spot where we were set up, it was, I think our range was about 360 yards, which was the true distance. But of course, when you're hunting in the mountain, mountains, you need to, uh, correct for the angle and, and our angle was pretty steep so our corrected distance was about 320 yards so you know the stage was set the, the rams were there we were up top we, they did they didn't know we were there so we decided you know let's set up for a shot so we we took a lot of time setting up we got the packs just right to where I could you know get the rest that I that I really wanted to make a you know an ethical shot and uh, but once we were set up, it, you know, it, things got even more intense because the ram that we were after was bedded down when we were finally set up. And, and I'm aiming at him and I'm, I'm steady and I'm ready, but you know, I, I don't want to take the laying down shot. I've, I've seen it go wrong too many times, so we figured we'll just be patient and wait for him to stand up. As time goes on, you know, five minutes passes, ten minutes passes, and he just won't get up. He's, he's just laying there and I'm... I'm starting to think, man, is he ever going to stand up? And sure enough, his buddy comes over another ram and starts, you know, kind of nudging him a little bit. And I'm thinking, oh, it's it's about to happen. And he stands up, and his other the other ram gets right in front of him. So I don't I don't get a shot right there. So now the tension's building even more. And now they're just standing side by side. The other ram blocking the target ram. And I, I mean, maybe another five minutes goes by and. The ram in front beds down, and then it's, you know, it's the communication starts going haywire. I'm, is it the one standing or is it the one laying down? And it's the one laying down. No, it's the one standing. And we had to, we kind of had to get everything sorted out there in the moment. And once we did, it, it still took a little while for that ram to turn and step out and give me a, a clean shot. But when he did, it was, it was pretty quick the way it went down. The Best of the West is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Hunt and Fool. The Best of the West shooting systems. 
Defiance Custom Actions, The Wild Sheep Foundation, Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit LongRangeStore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. The tension's building and, and you're thinking, is this angle really right? Do I need to dial to a different distance? Is, is the wind a factor? Because where we were up top, the wind was blowing about 15 miles an hour and you know, we're, we're kind of discussing it. You know, do I need to hold to the right a little bit? This wind's pretty powerful. And then we, we get to looking down where the sheep are and none of the plants are moving at all. It, it looks real calm down there. So we're thinking maybe, maybe the wind isn't gonna affect us too much. And, we had a lot of time to consider the shot, and but I think that was actually a good thing because we were able to weigh the variables and, and make sure we were doing it the right way. After staring at that ram through the scope for a good long while, it looked like he was finally getting ready to turn and give me that look that I had been waiting for. And as soon as he did, you know, I whispered back, hey, you guys good? I heard a yep. And as soon as I heard that yep, I started a, a slow squeeze on that trigger and that 6.5 barked and heard the clap, and it was a pretty surreal experience when that, when that ram hit the dirt. I can't even put into words what was going through my mind at the time. It was, it was really special. I decided, instead of getting right on the edge of the, uh, the ridge and looking down where the rams were, I would stay back 10 yards, and I did this intentionally, and, I didn't want Blaine to be thinking about his father there. I wanted him to be thinking about everything that he's learned in his uh, hunting career and use all the knowledge and put it into practice, and, and he did. I don't know that I would have the patience to, to wait as long as he did, uh, especially with a gun like the gun that he had there from Best of the West. Those shots, he could make those all day long. But again, waiting for that ram to, to rise, uh, not only enhance the experience, but it was the ethical thing for him to do, and everything worked out worked out well. After the shot, you know, after we'd all kind of celebrated and high fived, and we were all you know reliving the past you know 50 minutes to an hour that we were staring at this ram, and you know all the tension. You know, it's it's a great feeling, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, man, I I want to get hands on that 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 ram, and just a crazy feeling knowing that that you've you've taken your first ram and. And you just you just can't wait to get down there. So Emilio starts leading the way, and, and it's not an easy descent. You know, we're going straight down. Rocks are tumbling. I'm falling left and right, and my legs started getting real shaky when we when we got up close to it. And when I finally popped over a ledge and, and saw that ram laying there, I was I, I mean I was speechless. I didn't I didn't know what to say or do. And words can't explain that that feeling of walking up on on your first big horn sheep and you know, the, the beauty that they have and, and just the, the mass and they grow when you get up to them, you know, like you, you look at them through the scope at 360 yards and you're like, wow, that's a big sheep. And you get up at them two yards and wow, that's a giant sheep. It was just, it was surreal. Having the chance to walk up to my son's uh, first sheep with him is something I'll never forget. Uh, as we came down the mountain and my quads were burning uh, and getting closer and closer to that ram. It, I knew it was a memory that would, that would last for a lifetime. I, I'm sure it will for Blaine, it will for me as well, and uh, I'm sure many more families will get to experience something like this in future generations if families like the Espinos continue to do what they've done for the species and everybody as a group uh, supports conservation of wild sheep. I've seen all the all the videos and pictures of people with the, the you know the big beautiful set of horns strapped into that backpack, and that's that's been a dream of mine for for about as as long as I can remember. We we got it all strapped up on the pack, and and I, I'm looking at that jeep down below, and it's it seems to be getting further away with every step I take. But you know we we slowly made our way down. I, I followed Juan. He he picked best path for us to follow, and. I only fell down, I think, one time, so that, that was, you know, that was an accomplishment in and of itself. So, on a real note, packing that, that sheep off the mountain was, was a pretty awesome experience in itself, and 
you know, something I'll remember for the rest of my life. And, you know, I can't thank Emilio and, and all, all the people here enough for such an, such an amazing job that they do. And, and the place that they have here is just unbelievable. I've, I've never seen anything like it. It's, it's truly a, you know, a world-class experience. Thanks for watching this episode of The Best of the West. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest long-range hunting adventures.